Shall we all stand? Shall we all stand? Let's humble ourselves for the word of prayer. Our gracious Father God in heaven, we thank you so much this afternoon for giving us another opportunity to come and sit at your feet. Dear Lord, our hearts are ready to receive from your servants whom you have chosen to, uh, this afternoon to speak to us. Our Father and our God, may you guide and lead us, may you empower and inspire each one of us, the audience and also the facilitators, so that all of us may benefit from what you have prepared for us this afternoon. We pray for a good beginning and good ending, and all of us, dear Lord, we may say truly, you have spoken to us once again. In your hands, Lord, we commit ourselves so that everything may go in accordance to your will. Use your servants as instruments in your hands. For this we pray, believing and trusting in Jesus' name. Amen. God is good. And all the time. Wow. So we shall start with our speaker, uh, Martha, uh, just right, right away. We shall listen to what she's got to say on the same area. And then after that, we shall uh, also hear from the Lady Justice, Mateka. And then we shall have a round of questions on these various areas. Me, myself, uh, my name is Eunice Kelly. I'm also a magistrate at uh, Nakuru Law Courts. And uh, I deal also with lots, uh, I deal with children matters. So uh, let's go right away to the area of discussion. I, introduce, I welcome Madam Martha. How are you? Fine. Thank you. We take this opportunity to thank our Heavenly Father for giving us another opportunity this afternoon. As you have heard, I'm Mato Moyo, children officer in charge of Child Protection Center in Akuru County. I know you are aware uh, we have sub county children offices in Nakuru County, about 11. Those are running. Then we have the county children office at the regional headquarters. <coughs> now, when you hear of Child Protection Center, it's, there's nothing new, it's uh, all about children office, but having a, a subsection that are, are a pilot, because in Kenya, <coughs> at the moment, we have about six child protection centers as pilot. And the reason as to why they are called pilot the government wanted to see whether they can have what they call one-stop shop, whereby when you report the issue of a child to children office, you are expected to get all the services entailing supporting the child. If it is assault, they refer you to the police and the police is at the doorstep where you can report the case, get the P3. If it is education, you get the education officer at the doorstep. If it is the magistrate referring to judiciary, the magistrate is just here where you take the case for legal issues. If it is medical, sexual abuse, for example, you are expected to go to the other side and get medical assistance. That is why the government 
And many other services, of course, which I cannot list all of them. That's why they started Child Protection Center in pilot areas. We have one in Marindi, which was the first to start. Nakuru was the second, where we, we were the second pilot. Garissa, the third. We have the others which came later. Kakamega, Tiaya, and Nairobi, total seven. Garissa is different because it is dealing, it is very specific. It deals with babies, abandoned babies. But the rest, they are dealing with all ch the children, the age zero to 18. Uh, when it started, it was government who initiated, then supported by UNICEF, and we had different implementing agencies like CISP in Nakuru, Plan Kenya in Nairobi, and many other partners. Now, the issue at hand we want to look at is children at risk. Children at risk, this is a topic which everybody is concerned and I want to take this opportunity to ask members, both the children who are inside here, because I can see children are here, adults who are here, to help me understand how far do you understand it about children at risk. If I may ask, who is a child at risk? That's where I can start from. Who is a child at risk? From our understanding. Because you can't tell me you have never heard of this. Who can give you a, who can give a trial? A child at risk? Lisa Hand. Yes, please. A child who is subjected to danger or to unsafe environment. Thank you very much. Any heart suggestion? Because we have an understanding. Because I, as a children officer, when I'm seated in that office, I normally get good Samaritan. I normally get uh, parents, teachers, church elders, children coming to say this has happened to a child at a certain place. Can you help me? So I don't think people, when they go to report, they don't understand. Any other suggestion? Yes, please. He's talking about a child experiencing a threat. It's a very wide one because uh, threat. Who can tell us one threat? Because that is an open. Uh, we 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 are talking. Uh, we are. This is not a new topic in Kenya. Everybody knows children who are at risk, but in a different in a different way. In your own understanding, you know. He has said children are, who, are, who are, who have threats. I can give example threats like, uh, take example. We have problems of 
ordinary pregnancies in school. And you saw how it was all over the, 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 the kind of research done and how it was reported children were in schools, in even primary schools. Children ha, ha, were, many of them listed having early pregnancies. Those are threats. Am I right? Those are threats. Am I right? That is one. What about in this uh, war torn areas where people take children to, fa uh, to, to, fa uh, to fight? Children are used as soldiers. So, if we are talking children who, who can even go to war, who can be used to fight, is that not a threat, as he said? What about, what about this mobile phone, which we are enjoying? We are enjoying this facility we call mobile phone. When your daughter or son take it, go and Google and meet a chairman uh, old Mze, uh, as a man friend. Is that a threat? Is it a threat? Thank you. So, it's only you can decide to keep quiet. Children at risk is a wide topic. We have those emerging issues that are making our children at risk. I can't name them, but I wanted to give you a, a kind of uh, explanation which I tried to make. What makes children at risk? What makes children at risk? When children are experiencing significant parenting problems, those children are at risk. Do we agree with that? If children are experiencing significant parenting problems, those children are defined to be children at risk. Because it will affect their uh, it will affect development. It will affect, obviously, their development. Let us take the ideal situation. If parents are uh, separated for some reasons, if parents are uh, divorced, because my learned friends are here, if we get enough time, they will tell you the experience parents undergo when they separate or when they divorce in courts, how children really behave is not a very good experience. As ladies, uh, it happens we are three ladies here. As ladies who are again parents, we do join children crying in those courts. We do, uh, I remember many times where the magistrate will advise me, children officer, take these children aside and help them. Help them to calm down or guide them. No child at any one, there's no child at any time who will accept divorce or separation of the, of the parents. <coughs> Leave alone the, 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 the effect it brings on their development. Emotionally, children break down. You find children, whether they are grown-up children, even we are talking about children at the 20s, because the word children in the definition of the Children Act and the Constitution is 0 to 18. But there are, there are those gaps where you find a child who is 25 in college, 
and here the parents are not living together, they have separated or they have divorced. Those are the most affected children, I tell you, than even the babies. Because at that age from age 18 and above, where children want also to move to another stage, they don't even understand why their parents are divorcing or are separating when they should be assisted to make choices for their spouses to be. Okay. What makes a child at risk? That's what I'm trying to uh, put across. Where, uh, for example, again you find children experiencing family conflict, including family breakdown under pressure due to either illness, physical illness, or mental illness. I don't know whether you have ever witnessed and you agree with me with the condition now we are living. Corona has caused a lot of damage. The family system is affected by the, the, the new epidemic we call Corona. Children have either seen their parents who are very sick or who are terminally ill to a point now the family system breaks down the young children don't even go to school it is the same as we have been living with cancer i don't know whether you have witnessed those families affected by cancer parents who have terminal illness Parents who have been disabled, either by disease or by accident, those are children who are at risk. We again have another category, uh, children who either the children themselves or the parents are experiencing this, what we call substance abuse. You understand what we call substance abuse? Either parents are using substance abuse or children themselves are using substance abuse. You have seen families educate child having very high hopes on him or her, but at the end of it, the child joined the group of substance abuse. It is terrible. Another issue is disability, which I've already talked, if accident occurred and it changed the, uh, the system where the, the breadwinner, either the mother or the father, got an accident and became disabled, that those are children at risk. Uh, it's a big list. And uh, with us, children office and the magistrates, you bear witness in the Children Act, they have categorized two types of uh, children. One we call children in conflict with the law, and another one, children in need of care and protection. And this is actually what we are talking about. Children at risk have given a list but I want to refer for those who have the Chil Children Act, either hard copy or a soft copy, to look at section 119. Children in need of care and protection, they are many. They give children who have early pregnancies as children in need of care and protection. They give children who are disabled as children in need of care and protection. They have given children who are, whose mothers have have deceased, or parents are deceased, uh, children in need of care and protection, we call them orphans, and that's why children department established with, in conjunction with the UNICEF, started this program we call OVC, 
OVC is a program giving families who have over and vulnerable children 2,000 shillings per month to support them to get the basic needs. Then we have children whose mothers are in prison. Uh, my learned friends, they, they, they can even talk about it. Those children whose mothers are in prison, they are children in need of care and protection, my friends. When you see a neighbor who has been arrested, especially mothers, and they are taken to cells, they leave children alone. And it is, they make them, of course, the mother might, or the parents might have committed a crime, they leave the children to be in need of care and protection, and therefore, they need help. We talk about children living in the street. We talk about children who are living in uh, condition, in homes, who are living in conditions, not what they live in. I don't know uh, when it rained, El Nino at a time. We have rescued children from who are living in houses where it is flooded, and we rescue those children. So, living in a condition that it is not fit for human living, those are children in need of care and protection. Children are taking drugs, as I mentioned earlier. So, for those who have the Children Act, you can look at Section 119. So, Another thing I wanted to, okay, how do you know that the children are, are at risk or are in need of care and protection? These examples I've given can uh, tell you. Even abused children, there are children who are at risk. We have parents who are abused, they are abusing their children, and those children, when they will grow up, they will have theirs, they will also abuse theirs. I came with an IEC material which needs to be put outside. It is stating, don't hit me, give me guidance. So who is this the child is telling, don't hit me, but give me guidance? It is me and you. We are parents because we were brought up getting discipline, in the name of discipline, and we were hit. At certain points, our fathers used to hit us. Unagongwa kwa kichwa. Ataki kujua ni wapi ya mekugonga. So, that kind of hitting, still, I'm also hitting. Because my parents used to hit me, I'm also doing what? And uh, nobody can tell me here, as you are seated here, my fellow Christians, that in, you don't, at one point, you don't abuse your child. If you are there, Mungu wame kusaidia sana. If you are there, Mungu wame fanya nini? We are all human beings. We do mistakes. When we are human beings, even Jesus, when he was a human being, he was born, a, he was a God, but born with that human flesh. At some point, he expected his humanity. And therefore, there is no holy person on earth we do mistakes, and even we don't apologize. When we hit, or we beat, or we, we box, we don't even apologize to our children. That is the, now the worst we do. Because when you are annoyed, you, you exhibit your emotions by hitting your child, but later, you realize you made a mistake. You don't even tell your child, I'm sorry, my child, I hit you. So I, I wanted also, uh, what are we supposed to do? That is what I wanted to reach and uh, hand over to her. What are we supposed to do? When all these, we identify, we are able to identify children who are at risk. What are we supposed to do? 
Point number one, we are supposed to do the following. Give guidance to those children who are at risk. We give guidance to them. We give guidance to the either parents or guardians or anybody who has the custody of the child. And in that, uh, in that way, when we are saying that, we are talking about safeguarding the rights and the welfare of children, which is clearly stated in the Kenyan laws, whereby you are giving the child the right and the welfare in terms of guidance, in terms of correction, and in terms of even referring to the relevant places where the child will get assistance. Because parenting, I don't know, parenting in our Kenyan system is a problem. We jump into marriages, we jump into starting families without proper guidance. And therefore, we don't have a formula on how we are parenting. I don't know whether in this church there is a, a session where those who have reached the age to marry or be married are taking a process on parenting. Is it there? Is the system there? For how long? For how long? Yes, please. I, I, stand, sorry. I stand to be corrected, but I think it's three months. Thereabouts. Faster. Pastor, you can confirm? <laughs> As I do confirm, it all depends. But when you go back to the Word of God, you'll find Moses, when he was being brought up by Yucabed, the mother, she took her, she requested to be given for three years. And that was the purpose of bringing up, training, and installing godliness in himself. And by the time he, he was being taken back to Egyptian parents who brought up, who, do, who did the work of parenting already, Moses had been installed in, him, in his mind the godliness that was required. And therefore, during old times, it took a longer time. But these times, uh, I think the parents are much so busy to the, to the activities of looking for the earnings uh, in, instead of having time with their children. So it uh, depends with the parents of, of today. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. That is the starting point of any family. If we could be having preparation for those who intend to marry, get a training on parenting, it will solve many of these problems. Otherwise, bear me witness, the government of Kenya has a challenge on how to help the Kenyan families become stable, the church at the same time as a challenge. If children are not well taken care of, I know we normally say children's section is not an essential service in the Republic of this Kenya. Two, essential services are uh, like prison. We are taking care of uh, our prisoners, but we are not taking care of our children. What are we doing upside down? And therefore, I used to get tired 
When I go to police station to help me rescue children, and they tell me, Madam Martha, you are disturbing me uh, about children. Here, I'm chasing the criminal. That is when I was in Stare sub-county. At Matare, children have been banned by our parents. The police officer is not ready to help me rescue those children, but he's ready to go and chase the, 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 the thugs at the Saramo area. Then I ask him, do you think you will finish this chasing of thugs if you don't help me uh, assist the children? Let us first support the children, then your work will be solved. That is where we are. That is the life we have. And then the family system is not well supported. In town, how many counseling centers do we have for families in terms of marriage therapist to help those who are not adjusting well? If they are not adjusting well, and here are children, where is the family? Where are the children? So it is upon us as a church to look even for volunteers from the community, the expert in terms of marriage therapies, in terms of counselors to help the family, so that we become an exemption in terms of family stability. It looks funny. Here I am a Christian an SDA standing at the desk of uh, Justice Mateka trying to dissolve the marriage. Yes, and uh, surprisingly enough, you find uh, what is causing a lot of breaking the family is having mistresses marrying second wives, giving examples from the Bible that Solomon had so many wives, giving all of those who had so many wives, but forgetting children at the other hand, they will suffer. It is quite a challenge for us. If the government cannot support the family, we expect the church to support the family strongly in USA, when the, the family system looked failing, in the year 1999, they came, the government came out with a strong system that every child belongs to a certain parent and therefore must be maintained. But in Kenya, children can be born, but supporting them to grow also it's a big, big problem. Those children in the street of Nakuru, they are children, some of them are children born by very prominent men of this country. Agree with me, disagree with me, but I can prove to you that that is it. Children who are living in the streets in any of this Kenyan town, about that percent are children born from very prominent men of this country. Therefore, we have a challenge. What do we do so that any child you have brought on earth, how do you support that child also to become like you and me? Otherwise, I stop here. I can talk like a, like a pastor when it comes to issue of children. Thank you very much. Now, our next speaker uh, will be um, just Lady Justice Mateka. She is uh, a judge of the High Court in Nakuru. She started from the magistracy, and I, I must say she's a mentor to me and to many of us. At least she gives us hope that at, when we grow up, we are going to be exactly like her. She's done a lot, especially in the area of children. She has a passion, I can say, a passion. It was said that there's no, some, there's nothing called a passionometer. I don't know where this, maybe these days there is. But if there's a way to measure passion that she has, 
I can tell you she's got a lot of passion on ch matters children. And uh, we have, even myself and many of us, we, have a, we do have a lot to learn from her every day. I'm hoping that this afternoon we shall also be enriched uh, with uh, the, knowledge, of, uh, the knowledge and experience that she has in the SAID area. So I welcome her. And uh, I also wanted to say that she, she started the Child Protection Unit in Nakuru. And even in Nyahururu, I believe so. Uh, she'll tell you more about that. Uh, so let me uh, join me in welcoming Lady Justice Badeka. Karibu. by the way. But you find a nice kazi. Miakangapi, madam. Kitambo hapa na kuru to kianza mambo ya watoto. So ni mefikuru pia kusabu munga menpatia na fasi ya kulinka hapa na mwenzangu tumefanya nae kazi kwa muda. So, ameguzia mengi. She has already actually gone through most of the what I was going to speak about. But I just want to summarize a little on the questions that you gave us. She has talked about what makes a child to be a child at risk. And in our law, in our Children's Act, it gives the list of all those things she has said. But it gives one uh, specific definition, a very small definition, that kind of covers. I'm trying to use this. OK, there. And uh, my brother there said it uh, somehow, generally. But a child who is exposed to any circumstance that is likely to interfere with his or her physical, mental, and social development. Physical, social, and mental development. That is almost every child. Sindio, because at every one time, kuna mtoto ambaye anapata changamoto katika maisha yake. Sindio, wakati ya kukutumboni, mama anazapata malaria. That exposes the child to what? <laughs> Eh? The development of that child can be affected, isn't it? Now, when the child is small, mama ameenda inje kumwaga maji ama kufua nguo, at that, mo that particular moment, that child is at risk. Sindio? Na siya tu neglect, you have not neglected the child, but you have to do something to take care of this child, but you have to leave the child there for a moment to go and do the other thing. But that moment, anything can happen. Si amefanyika. Unakuta mengia kwa mtungi ya maji. And before you know it, you are calling emergency. You are unaitana nduru. Eh? Because I'm, atuna hiyo emergency services. Ni nduru tu, watu wakuja atusaidie. Sindio? Eh, ni mwona mauliza changamoto. Siyo ni moja yao. Eh? You find your child in uh, mutungi, drowning. But there's no one you can call apart from scream, neighbors come, help you to resuscitate your child. So any circumstance that puts at risk the physical, mental, and social development, that is very broad. So wakati wa wote, unafikiria kuhusu mtoto ambaya kwa at risk, fikiria hayo. Jambo ambalo linezakufanya mtoto asikue vizuri. Because our law tells us it's the right of every child to survive and develop. Not just when they are already born, because our constitution says life begins where? Life begins where? At conception. So it means, ata wakati yako pale tumboni mwamama, ako na haki ya kusurvive hapo, na kudevelop to full term, na kuzaliwa. So anything you can think of. So that is the broad term of, you know, what, how we can define a child at risk. And then the list she has given, the list, we don't have a definition. But a child whose parent cannot parent, 
she talks about parenting responsibilities. In fact, in the Children's Act, that is the first category of children who are at risk. A child whose parent or guardian cannot parent. What does that tell you? The place of a parent is not just recognized by the Bible, pastor, but by the law. Ikiwa mzazi anashindwa kulea, kwa vyote vile, kulea CO2, kumpeleka shule, kumpa mavazi, kununua chakula, kumpa shelter, mm -mm. there is more than that. There is more, much, much more than that. And it's not just in the Bible or in our religion or in our morals. Also in the law, it says that there is more than that. And that is why our constitution says whether you are married to each other and you have a child, the child requires the support of both the mother and the father. Why? Because it recognizes that this child is a product of two people who have a duty to take care of that child and to provide what each one of them can provide. So you can see it is broad, okay? It is very broad, the place of a parent in the life of a child. So that category, a parent who cannot parent or a guardian who cannot parent, then it goes down. A child who is an orphan, a child who is, who is begging in the streets, a child whose parent is in prison, a child whose father or mother has a terminal illness, a child who has a terminal illness themselves. You know, all those categories are defined as children in need of care and protection because they're the ones at risk of different things. A child who was exposed to sexual uh, uh, abuse or a child who is at risk of sexual abuse. So that list is there. She mentioned the section of the law. I'm sure, uh, Madam, you can actually print that and share it with the church. It gives you categories of those children. And uh, I just thought maybe I can go over that. But there's another special uh, provision that says that children who, against whom certain offenses have been committed in their homes or against a child in that home. The categories are increased by the law in that way. It says there are certain offenses. If they are committed in that home or against a child in that home, then that child is also considered to be a child in need of care and protection or a child at risk. Or if a member of that household has committed that offense. Can you think of what offense that could be? Ile makosa itafanya, mzazi ya metenda kwa boma, ifanya watoto wengine wawe at risk. Tafadhali. Just think, what offense can you think that is so bad that if a parent commits that offense, everybody else is at risk? Uh -huh. Yes, ma'am. Yes, Pastor, yes, please. Alcoholism, yes, anything worse than that. There's no, is that the biggest thing, worst thing that a parent can do, yes? Oh, there's, there's an answer here. Can I, okay, I can't share my mic, but, yeah. yes. Murder, murder, yes, that's what, actually, if somebody kills another one in the home, that is really uh, at risk. But alcoholism, I'll come to that. Yes, your hand was up. Family breakups. An offense, an offense you can commit against another person. Sexual abuse. Kanisa, to watch a kuwa na haya, ya kuonge haya mambo, because ya naaribu maisha ya watu wengi, watoto, wa mama, wa baba. Sexual abuse. Actually, it is considered as one of those offenses if a parent in the home commits the offense, Tunajua siku hizi sio wa baba peke yao wanafanya. Pia wa mama wanafa? Akis tume graduate. No, is that graduation? Sujuri naitwa nini sasa? Because I can't think of another word. Lakini wa mama tume, aki tume jishusha. Mm. But I'm not saying wa baba wajishusha wakifanya hiyo. Pia hawa majishusha. But it was always known that 
it was always the men who were accused of those offenses. Maybe women used to do them and it was not, uh, there was no complaint, but now they are there. What I'm saying is, some of those offenses put everybody at risk. They put the child, other children, if that person has those tendencies. Kama yeye, ako na hiyo, hiyo ndiyo njia yake ya kufanya mambo, utakuta kila mtu kwa hiyo boma, ako at risk. So, ikiwa one child amefanyua hiyo kosa kwa hiyo boma na mzazi, Every child in that home becomes a child at risk. So there are certain offenses. If somebody commits murder, kills the other parent, or kills another child, the other people in that home become at risk. So I just wanted to explain that some of these offenses are, uh, you know, the law adds those ones and mentions them uh, in the law so that they increase the, the, the list of those ch children. So any offense that causes grievous harm to a person in that home, and then the offenses they call moral offenses, they are also set out there uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the law. And if, for example, um, maybe there's prostitution happening there, a uh, supply of drugs in the home, and natural offenses in the home, that puts the children in the home at risk. So somebody asked, what are the legal consequences of putting a child at risk? The Children Act itself begins by giving a broad example. It says, any person who has reasonable cause to believe that a child is in need of care and protection may report the matter to a nearest authorized officer. That's the first step. The authorized officers are defined by the law. The police are an authorized officer. Your local chief is an authorized officer. The children officer is an authorized officer. The labor officer, if the child is being abused through labor, kuna labor office pale karibu na kotini, you can report there. So reporting to the authorized officer, that is the first thing that you can do. Okay? But of course, you can look for the court and report to the magistrate. One, I remember one person who walked to my office when I was a children magistrate. I used to sit at the municipal court and my door was always open. So this lady walks in and says, in my neighborhood, there is a family, baba lipiga mama katoroka, na kuna watoto wawili hapo vijana na huyo mzee amepotea tuji pali alienda sangine anakuja usiku ana tunasikia tu watoto wakilia there were two boys both in uh, one in baby in uh, top class the other class two na kaniambia na usiseme ni mimi because nitaribu nini neighborhood neighborhood si nilijua na kanipatia address and because we had a good collaboration I've gone to the next question about services available. Good collaboration with the children's office and other people. I just picked my phone and called the officer at the children's desk. Madam, at the police station. I said, kuna watoto, mali fulani, 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 wanaitaji kukua rescued. Children officer kuja. Wakachukua gari, wakaenda uko. And because we had a specific address, and uh, the boys were found, and they were brought to my office. And what did we do? We did what she was saying. You know, just rescue them, find a, a children officer, find them a place to stay as we looked for the mother who had been beaten and disappeared to her village. In fact, I learned later that she had been admitted at hospital, Karibu Kufa, Alipotoka Yakaenda Tukuao. So, of course, we were able to get her. She was very afraid to come back to Nakuru, Lakini Alirudi, and uh, our, our protection. Because Mze alipotea kabisa, we never found him. We learned that Kazini alikuwa haonekani, alikuwa sivu ya mepata shidagani. So we took the boys, the mother went with them. Akapeleka nyumbani. So those kind of situations. So I'll just give you an example. So reporting, you need to report. In church, she talked about having something in church where people can, can report certain things. We can only do that if we are open about these things. Tusiogope kuongea mambo ambayo yana dhulumu family zetu. So if there is a way you can have a committee or uh, some elders, people who will not judge that person, who will not tell you, wewe umesema bwana kwa likupiga jana, apana, we have to come and discuss. Atukatai discuss, we are even told in, in court, before you even allow a divorce, send them to go for counseling. But kuna mahali nafika mwisho, sindio? Kuna mahali nafika mwisho where somebody can lose their life. Sinikweli? Eh, tusikubali ifike hapo. 
So we should be able to get um, to report these matters, report them to the authorities that uh, that need to be reported to. Now, what happens to a parent or anybody who puts a child to be in need of care and protection? Anyone? The law is clear. Section 127 of the Children Act will tell you if you put a child at risk, if you make a child to be in need of care and protection, you be the parent, the guardian. In fact, it's specific to parents and guardians. You can actually be jailed for five years. It's just that we don't allow it. We prefer to use the other, <laughs> the other means. Because the moment we jail you also, your children become in need of care and protection. But there are some we have imprisoned, parents. Kuna wale tumefunga, jela. Na tukapeleka watoto kuingine. Because if you are continuously putting your children at risk, by doing these things. For example, if, a, if there's been incest, a parent has defiled their child, as much as that family will break, that family is safer with that parent away from the home, isn't it? Because he also needs kusaidiwa. Uyo mtu ambaye atangalia mtoto wake, either wakike ama wakiume, aone bibi, mm -mm. Ayuko sawa. So wakati tunam report, when if it's the mother or the child or a relative reporting, ayuko say yule mtu, you're actually helping him so that he can go and get help. And then you save other, other people, other children. So that is what happens. The matter is reported, but if it is the usual things, like for example, neglecting a child, maybe Sometimes we also get uh, problems. Parents get problems. They might neglect their children because of many problems. Like now Corona is there. We have learned from the reports made that the highest number of cases is neglect of children. Why? Because parents have lost their jobs. Hauna pesa mze, unatembea mchana kutwa, uja tengeneza atandururu. So what do you do? You'd rather walk away than go home and see the hungry faces of your children. Sasa huyo mzee akishikwa, alete kotini. Huyo ni wakufunga kweli. It is just to try and talk to him and for him to realize that even if you have nothing, your children still need, need you. Because when they see you and you explain to them, hatuna kitu leo, it's better than when you simply disappear then you create two problems. An absent parent and an hungry child, and an angry child, and a child whose mental uh, growth is, will be affected. So there are those um, uh, solutions. So those ones, we can put them on probation. Probation supervision, and also supervision by children's department, where they are assisted to come to terms with their situations. If things are very difficult, Sometimes children are removed from their homes. I'll give you an example. If it's a defilement case, for example, the child has been abused in the home. When the case has been reported, you will see sometimes the child will not come back home because the court will ask for what we call a children officer's report. They will go and write the report, interview the child, look at the home, look for another relative. If there's no relative, then that child may be taken to a children's home, awaiting the trial and trying to see if there's another place she can go or he can go. So sometimes people, children are removed from homes because of uh, the risk that is there and taken to charitable institutions uh, and other um, and or rescue centers or uh, to what we call a fit person. That could be the next relative, your sister, your friend, because you know you can identify somebody from the family where the child is comfortable and the child can be uh, taken there through a court order. Um, and then if um, it's a situation that can be rescued, then they can be taken for guidance and counseling. I'll give you a very small example of uh, two parents. Najia tunasangine tunazawa toto wakonda retire. Nani amenda retire hapa? I'm almost going. Who is retired from their job yet? Your age group, Akuna. 
Well, I had this couple. Their last born was 11. Wale ngini wakubo wa shaya enda wa nini. So mama mzee ana biashara, mama kuna duka yake. So she comes with this boy to the shop at 5 in the morning. Kanafanya homework kwa back shop. Eh? Alafu saya kuenda shule kifika, kanaenda shule. Jioni anakuja, mama duka munafunga sanga api sa tatu. So he sits at the back of the shop until 9 they go home with the mother. Remember, this is a very well off family. So he starts stealing from his friends in school, anaiba, anaiba hii, anaiba hii. Finally, they bring him to court, Mwizi. What have we done to that boy? Brought with stealing. So the mother comes and says, Mimi stuck him toto, pelekea serikali. Amekua Mwizi, ananiaibisha uko kwa kijiji, uko kwa, kwa estate. I'm like, mami, why are you saying your child is a thief? That, you know, your term, you know, kusha bandika mtoto jina. Atisi ya meiba, ya meibia fulani, ya meiba nini, shuleni, ya meiba kalamu, ya meiba kitabu. Then when I ask her to do the report and it comes, that is the story I get. This child gets no attention. None. Umesikia vile wanafanya, anakuja kwa duka nini nini, and that's the way his life has been tangu waende shule, anze kuenda shule. So I tell her, uh-uh, you have to go for counseling. This child is not going to any institution. You see, after 10 years, you can go to an institution, a rehabilitation institution. Can you imagine at 11 years, unataka mtoto wako waende, approved, you call it approved. But here is a mother saying, me ni mechoka hui mtoto waende approved. So I tell her, mm -mm -mm. from the report, I can see the problem is attention. So when Mze is summoned, when they're counseling, when I say, how are you? You see, some of us in this room and in other places think counseling is for people who have mental, but it's just about settling issues, trying to see where the problem is. And luckily enough, that time I had volunteers who used to volunteer because Atuna to volunteer for the children's court for counseling. So I sent them there. I said, Sasa ini order ya koti, mutaenda tu. So if, when the court tells you to go, you go. Because kuna penalties if you don't go. When they went there, I think it was made clear to them, or they realized, I think the counselor makes you realize where the problem is. Shida ni wa, ni wao. And after a few sessions, they just said, ah, uh -uh, they want to go home with their child. So kuna hiyo referral for guidance and counseling. The court has the powers to do that, and we do it, and we have seen it work. So not everybody who puts their child at risk is imprisoned or fined because court... So when you report somebody who is neglecting their child or mistreating their child, please don't imagine that unaenda kumaribia maisha, unasaidia yule mtoto, or wale watoto. And the court can... If, for example, we know you have counselors in this church, you can partner with the children's court. They can be referring their cases to your counselors in the church. And you'll be doing community service, assisting parents and children who have a problem. Because as I've told you, the system does not have those support things that we need. We have to rely on, on volunteers. So basically, uh, those are the things we can do, um, or, or what the courts do, or the legal implications that uh, you'll find when you put a child at risk. Now, maybe I can just explain a little about children who commit crime. We call them children in conflict with the law. These others, we have seen they are children in need of care and protection. So when a child commits crime, anaiba, anapiga mtu, anafanya jambo lingine, anavuta bangi, ama whatever, all those things that children can do, what do we do? What we have seen in the courts is a total rejection of that child. Because mzazi atapeleka police station, atashikwa, atafanyiwa all the processes, and some parents are very happy he's out of their hands. But sheria ya Kenya inasema nini? Inasema mtoto 
hata akivunja sheria kwanza ni mtoto kabla hajakuwa mvunjaji wa sheria tunaelewana before the child uh, commits crime they are a child so we are required even as the courts to look at their welfare first because they are at risk it is being at risk that made them commit the crime that is the first assumption about children who commit crime that first they were at risk or they were in need of care and protection or they had delinquency issues they are delinquent they wako wanafanya makosa ndogo ndogo hapa na pale hawakupata maelezo ya vile wataishi maisha yao hawakupata mwelekezo wa kutosha so finally they degenerate and end up committing crime so what does that mean we have a duty to to stop that degeneration that delinquency when we notice the signs hmm? mtoto anakuwa neglected kwa jirani kesho atakuja kuibi utakuta sufuria yako hakuna why because he came home there was no food and he took your sufuria and sold it to buy something ama anaanza kuvuta glue why because he has an emptiness in him there are so those boys some of them you meet them utapata tu ni kitu hana hapa hakuna sijui hapa inaitwaaje this not this one you are seeing the one inside <laughs> eh? you know working in that court for children i met those boys they became my friends i would be at the that task silikuwa uko chini karibu na stage when i worked in nyahururu i had come from nyahururu natoka kwa matatu na ingia supermarket then there will be this boy telling me madam wa court four and is you know really high on glue eh so nipatie hiyo nikubebe unipatie kobole and will be in a conversation sasa si ulikuwa juzi kotini wewe hmm na nikawacha umeacha kunywa glue sasa mimi nimefanyika sikupatie hiyo kobole lakini ni bebe bag trend <laughs> all i'm saying is there is something lacking and when those who were able somebody was able to reach them they left the streets they left na huwa wanatoka na wanaacha kuwa wezi na kuacha na kuwa waharibifu so all i'm saying is a child who commits crime is first a child before they commit the crime and we are obligated in my mother tongue we say um you can bend uh, a branch of a tree when it's still green ikikuwa ngumu ukijaribu ku bend itavunjika si ndio so if you want to shape it into something you shape it when it is still green ikisha kauka ni ngumu so between that zero to 17 and 364 days that person is a child according to our law and that person needs us to help them to deal with their situation so that if they are in any risk ni sisi tunahitajika kuingilia hapo kati na kumsaidia so basically i think um, i've covered most of <laughs> what i needed to say but uh, the most important thing that i like uh, uh, saying is that uh, all of us when it comes to giving children haki or justice or ensuring that they grow up to be children we are proud of it doesn't matter if it is yours or your neighbors because most of us grew up when a child was brought up by the village or by the estate some of us grew up in some estates and within that estate if mama fulani angekupata ukifanya kitu utachapwa ama uta, utakuwa reprimanded na utarudia hiyo kitu but now that has been taken away and put in the system that we have put in place we have the church we have the courts we have the department of children we have the police we have the community and we are all required to work as a system hiyo ndio sasa village you know that is the village that we have created for ourselves so we need to make it work for ourselves and ensure that when these things happen we do the right thing and the right thing is to make sure we report when we can take action we take the action 
when we see something happening, nothing has been done, we take the next step and report to the next place. So that, for example, I've seen there are teachers who do a very good job. They'll report when they see a child is looking neglected and say, uh, mtoto anakaa kuna kama kuna kitu and leave it to the people who investigate to follow up. So to tusaidiane kwa sababu haki ya mtoto ni jukumu letu sote. Nataka kuachia hapo ili tupate maswali. Asante sana. Now, um, to Saidiane, so Abu Haki am Toto ni Jukumuletu, Sisi Water Sivio. Now, I, uh, as I said, I indicated earlier, I'm sure that we may be having questions. We can go to, uh, a, 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 to answer, at least to respond to some of the questions we may have for now for a few, just a few minutes. And then we can have uh, last remarks. And then we can have uh, a vote of thanks. And uh, I, I want to ambush uh, Mr. Ombete. He will have, give us the closing prayer unless there's any other, anything else. So kindly, let's ask questions um, to, or even comments. You're welcome to even give us any comments that you may have. So you can tell us, uh, you can just ask a question. Let's be free to ask any question you may have for any of our speakers or any of us up here. Does anyone have a question? Or a comment? Okay, thank you so much for the information we have learned. I'm grateful. So mine is a question and a bit off. I, because you're here, maybe we can get to know uh, the legal process of adoption. It's, it's a bit off, but it's good you can help us. And uh, who, which child is fit for adoption or fostering? Thank you. Take a note of that. Any other question? Hmm. Yes. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Well, both children come and report their parents that they have refused to pay for them school fees. How will I assist them? Since they don't have contact for me to follow up on them, I talk to the fathers, but I don't know whether they are assisted thereafter. How can I assist us? Because they are are at the risk of not getting education, which is their right. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Maybe I can start with the one on, on adoption. Uh, uh, the adoption process, uh, okay, right now we have a small booklet, I, I don't have it, but we have a small booklet that was prepared by the family division on adoption processes, but um, any child from six months can be adopted, but the child must be declared free for adoption. The process of declaring the child free for adoption is um, a process that is provided for in the law, how they do it, because a person wanting to adopt a child will need to go to an adoption agency. And that agency now uh, is the one that uh, gets the proposed or, or, or the person interested in adopting the child, now the child to adopt. Because we have uh, different institutions where children 
are, 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 are held. In fact, it's good you've asked that one question because it's one of the ways that children at risk are assisted, one of the legal ways. If an abandoned child is um, in, in an institution, that's one of the ways of giving them a home. So the process, as I said, you go to an adoption agency um, and they will um, uh, identify a child because you say what, what age of a child you want. So they identify the child for you and they go through the process of declaring the child free for adoption. How do they do that? If the child was, a, was a, say for example, abandoned, there must have been a report at a police station and the police are expected to have investigated and confirmed that nobody is interested in that child. Nobody has come looking for that child. So that child is then declared free for adoption. And you, the adopter, a proposed adopter, you are assessed for your suitability to adopt. So the agency prepares a report on you. This report includes, um, you know, like um, your health, your ability to take care of the child doesn't mean that you have to be rich. I mean, anyone who is willing to take a child and they have a loving heart, that's basically all. And they can provide the basics, that is the most important thing. So they, they, they actually do that. Then they will file that, uh, your application to adopt to court. Because at the end of the day, that child must be declared to be your child. So what they do, they bring an application to court and the adoption are done in the high court. They bring your application with all those documents. Then the court will still have us to ask for another report from the Department of Children's Services. They have to come and do an assessment to see whether you are suitable. Then you are required to provide what they call a guardian, uh, a legal guardian. This is because a legal guardian is somebody, if you are not there, who would take up the parental responsibility for your child. Remember, this is not your biological child. And you're taking up now as a parent. But you see your relatives or other people may not be interested. It is your desire yourself to have this child. So you must provide a legal guardian, somebody who, if you are not there, would completely take up the responsibility for this child. Then the court also requires what we call a guardian ad litem. This is a, a person who, when the case is going on, we look into the interest of the child. You know you can tell us things about yourself, you are this, you are good, you are what, but there's maybe another side that the law might not know. So this person is supposed to be able to tell us if there's anything they have noticed that is not too good between you and the child, the guardian ad litem. So we get all these reports, then we fix a date for hearing, and we come and hear the, hear the adopting parent, it could be made a, uh, uh, one or two it could be the, the mother, the lady, or the lady and the husband, and they 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 they, 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 they are heard. And if the court is satisfied that they fit all the requirements, because there are also age limits. If you are beyond 65, you may not be allowed to adopt a child. So 65 and below. If you are gay, our law says you can't adopt. And um, there there is a an age gap that is required. Eh? Uh, between you, if you are very young, an age gap between you and the child. I, I can't remember it often, but the, that is uh, in the law. So when we hear that, then we determine you are suitable. Then we make the order and give you the child. We make the adoption order, and uh, it means that that becomes your child. You know, you cannot tomorrow say, I don't know, he'll turn out this way, I don't want him. Okay, so that, that is basically the briefest way I can give it. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, maybe. One as she has said is adoption and uh, she has explained it but i think there is also kinship ad adoption i don't want to talk that i want to talk about foster care and uh, guardianship foster care is usually uh, given by the children office where you fill the form they are set to 
in the children active, you check at the back of it, you can see a sample, you fill that form, and the child probably must be in a CCI, a charitable children institution. But it is uh, short-lived. Usually it should be uh, a period of six months, a renewal, then a renewal, after that you return the child. Though there is some re reforms, but it is not permanent. Guardianship. Guardianship is also done. You can have guardianship to children who are related to you. And uh, usually, uh, if your sister passed on, and you feel you want to take care of the children plus their properties, you can apply for guardianship, whereby you are supporting the children and guarding the properties like land, buildings, until they are of 18. Then it ceases after 18. Am I right? So, sometimes, uh, sometimes there is a mistake people do. You take guardianship, okay, the process is simple. Once you file guardianship in court, then they ask for a child report, then it is done, you are given. But after, after it is over, it is expected that the children will take care of themselves and their properties if they were orphans. But again, we have guardianship where you can take joint, more than one person, to, to take guardianship for a certain uh, family children whose parents are not alive. And uh, at some point, even when they are old enough, they may not even manage to take care of their properties which were left behind. Still, I don't know whether there's a concession for that in court, where you will be still monitoring how they are taking care of the properties. You can even take guardianship for, for any child who you don't know. In case, in fact, we, we have children who are in children's homes, where we even ask children, officer, we encourage emptiness. Families whose children are grown and are, have gone. You can get guardianship of children who are in charge of children of uh, uh, children homes, and uh, you give them support. They get their education as they are giving you a company in your family. And when they are old enough, I don't know how you dispose them off because that's where we have a challenge. Children have come back to our offices saying, I was, I was not, ad I was living with a certain family. They educated their children. You, you understand? And those children are a danger to you. Because if the child is never succeeded, he will end up joining a gang to come and finish you. And usually when I say my tender member and a circle. I hope you you went through that case which Mushimi Wabet in Nairobi. I did lay um toto yada dake. Like in the end, you are let our core kuja kufanya nini. So what am I saying? Do your best when you get those children. Because at the end of it, if you did wrong, they are the first who knows how you live, what you have, and they can organize for you to be slaughtered. <laughs> so, <laughs> the school fees issue, I wanted even to know, probably you can come and tell me where you work, because uh, maintenance of school fees you are talking about of children who come to you. But usually when you get such a kind of cases, if you are not able to help them, refer refer them to children offices, the nearest children offices, because you know like now here in Nakuru, we have 
Nakuru West, Nakuru East. You must know the locality of your place so that you can know where you assisted. If they are parents or guardians, they can be supported. And uh, what I wanted to talk about the uh, foster care and guardianship, when you get foster care of any child you don't know, the essence of taking care of that child is duty to give uh, assistance to any child who has no at all, so that that child can get the basic needs. And uh, we have even seen some families are married out children, either girls, who they, they never had any relationship. They only took foster care. As I told you, the thing is, you foster, the period is over, you renew. So in the process, you are giving what? Support to the child. And at the end of it, those children become even your relatives. Thank you very much. the question? Any, anyone else? I, I said earlier that I encourage us kindly to ask questions. I know you may have uh, a few questions even in the legal areas concerning children. This is a nice forum where we can get to answer at least a few of them. Anyone else with a question? Here. Yes. Dylan? Okay, yes. Uh, thank you very much, our uh, guest, for for that uh, beautiful presentation. Now I have about three questions. One concerning child discipline. Now, as Christians, we have this biblical principle that says that uh, spare the rod, spoil the child. Now, how do you reconcile this principle, which I believe that most of us believe that it was about caning the children with the legal requirements that outrightly outlaws that kind of action towards children. Because they believe that if you spare the road, if you don't cane these children, they become a discipline. And if the law says that if you raise a finger on no children, that is, uh, that is an illegality. So how do you reconcile these two principles? Now, the other question now is concerned the divorce. Uh, sometimes like, I think it was so hard to get a divorce from our courts. And you say that uh, one of the things that make these children vulnerable is divorce of parents, of separation of parents. But I have a feeling that nowadays it has become so easy to get divorce in our courts. Uh, some of the reasons you see being why the rules are being granted. Some of those reasons, if you look at in the time past, they could not make you get a divorce in our courts. Uh, I don't know whether I can, I can quote an example. Am, am I allowed? Okay, there's this, <laughs> this old man in Wasingish, what is his name? Kibor. When I look at the cases, the two divorces that he was granted, when you look at them, I'm not sure whether in the past, some years back, you, you will have gotten those di divorces. So I don't know what has changed that make getting divorced in our cause nowadays a bit easier than the past. Then uh, the other third question I have is uh, concerning this defilement uh, of, of children, especially girls, where you find that even their own fathers uh, defile their own daughters. Or you find that a man defiling even a, a three-month-old uh, baby. Now, this, some of these women look at them, you, you fail to understand that people who do these things, are they really normal? Or from your experience of the cases that come to your courts, what drives these people to do these kind of things? Are they suffering from some kind of disorders? Or is it just last? What really drives somebody, an old man, 
to go and defile a, even a two-month-old baby? What, what really happens? And again, when you, for instance, when you give them the sentences, which, like someone is, is sentenced to life imprisonment, is it really supposed to help this person change or just to punish that person? Thank you. I believe someone else had another question. We've taken note of those. Uh, kindly come. If you have a question, you can kindly walk, and walk up and use uh, the, this microphone. OK, it's OK. Uh, thank you. My brother is very fast. OK. My question is, uh, if, you, if there's a child who is uh, maybe using drugs, uh, these illegal drugs, what are the repercussions? Will he, will he be uh, taken to, to jail? Or let's say that the, the child is uh, of noble age, maybe he's uh, a teenager. What will happen to the child who is uh, using uh, some illegal substances? Thank you. Now we've taken note of that. Any other question? At least one or two last ones? Okay, fine. We can take from him and then from her and herself. Yes. 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 I want to thank you, Honorable Judge, and your team for the presentation you have made this afternoon which is very educative. Um, as you were presenting, you talked about child delinquency. And um, I wanted to ask this. How do you handle a, the case of a child who is delinquent? Uh, maybe she is running away from school, and she wants to uh, maybe get married off. Uh, we are talking about um, a child who is around 15 or less, or thereabout. And you have done everything that you should do as a parent. You have talked to this child. You have offered all the parental care and love, but the child is still, um, what is the position of uh, the law and policy in uh, relation to uh, protecting this child? Thank you. Okay, there was somebody there, and then you can come to your hand. Uh, I want to take this opportunity to thank you so much, presenters of this day, for the beautiful presentation. Now. I have a question concerning the children who are born differently. There are those ones who have maybe cerebral palsy or other conditions, and they are not, uh, the way they develop, they are not uh, well taken care of by the parents. Not that they're neglected, but the parents do not have the options uh, on how to take care of these children. And sometimes you may find that they are locked in their homes because of, we lack such facilities. How can you help this child to develop well, despite the way he or she was born? And how can you advise the parents how to care for this child? Because they were born small, but they are growing up to be adults. Thank you. Okay. We'll lastly, take one from her, and then you can answer the questions that we already have. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you for this good program for our children and the guardian and parents. Uh, I deal with children, and of late my concern has been so many children have been abused in all ways. Initially, we were told that strangers are the ones who abuse children, so our children were meant to keep away from strangers. But nowadays, it seems children who live to tell they usually come to know that it was somebody who was very close, somebody who knows the child very well. Now, kindly, 
and light us about who can really defile our children because we have realized they are not safe in our homes where they are playing in school. Thank you. Okay, we shall go, uh, uh, at, we shall at least try and answer the questions we already have before we have one last round. I think uh, I'll start with the road. Um, there's this song we sing about, the Lord is my shepherd. How does it go? The stanza with the road? That stanza that has the road in it, how does it go? There's, there's a stanza that has a road. Yes, Pastor, there is. That song about the Lord is my shepherd. That stanza that has the road or has a road in it. Yes? Yes. So what I always ask myself from the moment we, because I, I became a magistrate the time when we could sentence people to 14 canes. Tunakufunga jela na unachapo viboko. And there was a special person trained to do that in the prisons, to meet out that punishment to you. And then we outlawed caning of adults who had committed serious crimes. We outlawed, we called it torture. We have an international convention against torture. And caning of adults is considered to be torture. Tafakari hayo. So that when we outlawed corporal punishment, and I grew up also in school when that was there, but thankfully, uh, I don't know. Nilisoma, I went to a school, a city council school somewhere in Nairobi. Mimi, but yangu mzuri siku wai chapua. So, <laughs> I don't know how that feels. But as a UT, an untrained teacher after Form 6, in a school where we were only two female teachers, it was my duty to cane the girls. I refused. Because all my high school, nobody, no teacher caned me. But at home, I was thoroughly beaten by my mother. I cannot forget that. Kuchapwa, kichapwa. Nilichapwa, sawa sawa. But I stand here today as somebody who says caning of children today I don't think it's the same as us who grew up being caned. Because the world has moved on from inflicting pain for you to understand something, for you to understand you've done something wrong, to creating a situation where you should be able to understand what you're being. And if you can't, then you can't. In fact, Tulianzia Mahali, you are caning men. In fact, kuchapo ilikuwa wanaume do wanachapo wakienda jela. Women were not caned. Then, you could beat a woman, you could beat your wife. Sindio, it was allowed, even traditionally. Ilikuwa inakubelika manamuke ange chapwa. Unafanya makosa na, ma, na nini mbwana atafanya nini? Atakuchapa. Na ilikuwa inakubelika kwamba my husband can beat me. Traditionally. Sindio? Wenyetu kwa hapa tunajua. But we outlawed beating of women. Tukasema kwani mwanamke hana akili ya kufikiria ili aweze kuchapwa akifanya makosa kwa nyumba si anaweza fikiria anaweza tumia akili kama mwanaume So who tells us that children cannot understand if they are trained to talk the way we talk as adults I don't know the psychologists will tell you I am not a psychologist I'm just a magist I mean a lawyer but I have been persuaded from the things I have seen in my court in the name of corporal punishment by a parent, by a guardian, by a teacher, 
that we can only outlaw corporal punishment. I do not think that the road means the literal road. Because why is it a road here that is not literal for the adult, but it is a literal road for children? I'm not a preacher, a pastor. Why is it literal when it comes to children that were chapwe, lakini wakati tunaongea kuhusu mimi nasema, you are road and staff God. Kuna staff ile ya ku ya ku ya kufanya kondoo watembee vizuri si ndio hiyo yenye unaambia pita hivi si ndio na road ni kama tu ile lakini kwa watu wazima Mungu huwa anatuchapa kichapo gani ni kichapo ya <laughs> eh? so i think we need to think about it seriously about because that narrative needs to change Seriously, mimi maelewe vile nilielewa wakati nilielewa kwamba tumewacha kupiga watu wazima na nikaelewa kwamba ni kesi ambazo naona kotini ati mtu alikuwa na punish mtoto amevunja mkono amepiga kichwa imepasuka mtoto amepata ile hematoma ndani ya kichwa amekuwa mgonjwa ame collapse huko amekufa So for me that's all I can say and I think if we shift our mind from inflicting pain on children on any adult because mtu mzima akikosa kuelewa hutampiga ngumi you will find a way of talking so kuna punishment unaweza pea mtoto hiyo ikatazwi by the way the law doesn't say you don't punish your child a parent has the right also and duty to discipline their child it has not been taken away but i do not think the road was literal that understanding of the bible myself i think it meant that we have to find a way of punishing a person who commits who does wrong in a way that they understand they are wrong and change from doing that wrong again divorce yes please pastor <laughs> Yes. Um, yes. I will fear no evil for you are with me. You are rod and your staff they comforted me. Uh, when these psalms is for David. He was a shepherd. When he was um, doing the work of shepherding the flock the staff's work was to take care of the sheep unajua kondo ambazo hazijatolewa ile mkia yake pale chini wale ticks wanapenda kujificha hapo david could use oil anaweka hapo na anatumia staff kutoa The, st- the road was for the purpose of chasing away the enemy that was coming for to, to, to harass the sheep yes. and therefore he says lord being our shepherd yes. then the rod and staff that he uses yes. are always to comfort us yes. okay i said i'm not a preacher but that is my understanding okay i'm not a pr- that it you the road the way we interpret it when it comes to children and it comes to adults two different ways so that if i don't know but that's the way i understand it pastor and that's the way i interpret it that my understanding is that i do not think it was intended to inflict harm or pain so that someone can understand what they are saying maybe i shouldn't use the bible but that is my understanding of that uh, of that um, of that so for christians we have that problem that we must inflict pain on children so that they understand what they are being told or punish them for what they are doing so that they can change their ways well today it has been seen that it doesn't work 
It doesn't work because if adults will not be caned, why would we cane children? Now, I was talking about divorce. Now, divorce, if... Okay. Sorry. Yes. Yes. The topic of this plane uh, needs another day. It's a topic which needs a discussion, a real discussion. Yeah. Because uh, we, 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 we agree, all of us. Yes. If you have undisciplined children, it's you are not worthy in the community. But which discipline? That is where now there is a big, big challenge. Mm. In schools, children are given punishment to dig a hole to approve what? A stem mm -hmm. as a punishment. Mm -hmm. But aggregate, they are saying you are changing the attitude of our children. Mm -hmm. We are an agricultural what? Country. Mm -hmm. How can you use that as a punishment? Do you see a, a debate? Yes, there is. We have gone to other countries. Indians will put the child in a bathroom. It is winter, open cold water, and locks the child inside as a punishment. What is it doing to the health of the child? We are, uh, as children officers, we say children homes, they punish children by withdrawing their meal, a meal as a punishment. Mm -hmm. And when we went to schools talking, to, I mean, when we went to children homes talking to the children, Children said, I would rather be punished by being caned than being ninanyimu chakula. Do you see how that topic of discipline is a, a real challenge? Yeah. So, it is a topic of uh, which needs another Of course, another it's session. on day. Thank you. Yeah. But when it comes to the law, I think that is all I need to say. But I, I think I started with a disclaimer that I'm not a preacher. So, thank you for for that one, because I'm not here to mislead the congregation. Okay, so I hope you took it that I am not a preacher. So the second thing about divorce, you ask why it is so easy to give divorce today. You see, the law changed when we all changed. At the beginning, you could not get a divorce before you had finished three years of marriage. You couldn't. And also you had to show that you had gone for counseling. You had gone to your elders or to your church or somewhere for counseling. But what has happened to people who live together today? Today when someone says, you know, it used to be an, an empty threat at some point. So what does the court do to people who come and say, we no longer want to live together? People who say that this document you were, we signed in church is now a piece of paper. People who, after they came and said, I do before pastor, they left that door, went stayed for a week or two, and parted ways. Because in some jurisdictions, they don't even require you to give any reasons. So long as you say we can no longer live together, nobody wants to know why because they were not there when you came together. So it is, because there is, marriage is a sacrament and it's also a legal obligation. So the sacrament you can't break. Tunasema kwa mungu hakuna divorce, sindio? But the legal obligation can be broken, it's a legal obligation. So when you come and say, I no longer have any legal obligation with this person, what can the court do? And you show why you can't have that legal. It's like a contract. We agreed to live together like this and this and this. We can no longer do that. So the, the, I think that is where the problem is. That that um, that is what has happened. People today will tell you, "I'll kill you. I'll break your arm. I'll, I'll damage your face," and they do it literally. <laughs> in fact, I'll tell you a, a small story about even children. People are fighting like that in court, and you come and say, "Okay." you can uh, stay separately as you try and settle your issues and you can share custody of the children. But there's a case my friend did. 
And she did everything that anyone can do. Got the reports, everything, and said, okay, you can share. Leo unanda na watoto, mina kuja na kesho unanirudishia. But one parent took the children, went with them, killed himself, and killed the children. Because here we are saying, you can only separate for a while and share the children. But here, hataki hiyo story ati, leo tunakutana, tena kesho tunakutana, ya nataka tutuachane, tuachane. So we, as a court, you are in that place. So if a legal obligation has broken, you know, so that you are left traumatized when you did your job, thinking you are actually doing a good thing, but you are left traumatized. So imefika mahali, if people tell you, I no longer want to live with this person, you can't tell them, and go and try again. <laughs> so my brother, that is the problem. Then maybe uh, the other question, the other legal question I can answer is only about uh, uh, the girl who runs away from home and wants to get married. It is common for some reason that they'll come, they've been deferred and they say, Ooh, nbwana yangu sasa. But you know you, you, you don't give up. Eh? Even in court, until they're 18, even sometimes after 18, we don't give up. We try everything. So that girl will be found where she is, brought back to court, because now that will be brought as a, as a, as a child in need of care and protection. And uh, the children's court will try its best to bring the counselors, to put her in an institution, you know, all those things that the court can do, because you can only try to find. Some children have mental problems, by the way. And you might not know. You might, they might not have been diagnosed. It's the one thing we've come to learn, eh? Because why will a child leave their happy home and want to run away with a, with a matatu conductor they don't know? Amekuwa kienda na yu matatu, akienda tu shule akirudi, lakini siku moja anamua mina enda na uyu kuwake. Na unamfota huko na nakwambia sitoki, and the guy tries to throw her out and she's like, a case I had which ran for two years, in the first year she had a stillbirth, the second year she had a baby, all that, we did all that until one time she realized, ah, this, ma, this guy has also other girls who are pregnant with, at some point it explodes in the head, I am doing the wrong thing. And she comes back to her senses, that time it's after I've said what, a stillbirth, a baby, and two wasted years. But comes back to her attention and starts to continue, continues with school. So, my brother, it's, it's, it's really not, it's, it's okay, there's a legal aspect, and the part where, as a parent, you'll get frustrated, but the court can only do so much. Allow, you know, give you the opportunity to have those referrals, to have those uh, uh, medical checkups, and all those things. Because sometimes the child also has a, a mental issue, and we don't know why she's doing that. Um, they could also have been abused, and you don't know. Some of them have come to us. Unakuta mtoto alifanyua kitu, but akiwa mdogo kidogo, they never told you by somebody maybe who came to your home and you don't know and your daughter starts behaving funny when she's 12, 13, 14 and you don't know and she won't tell you because she didn't say that time or maybe the person is still around so there's so many things so if you can get a counsellor for this girl and if she can agree and uh, you know these days that's the only place she can because they open up the psychological part of the child and they're able to say this happened to me so it's really really difficult drugs for teenagers it's a very difficult situation because the law says we should have rehab places for children. We don't have government ones. She'll confirm. Because Madare and I 18, they don't admit you. So it's, it's a really, of course, if they are brought to court, if they're under 18, they'll not be imprisoned. They can only be taken to uh, a rehabilitation institution. Not rehabilitation for drugs, but rehab for criminal tendencies. Where maybe they'll just dry out. They might go to, to the one for the under 16s, under 15s, or go to, to the ones for the under uh, above 15, because they, they are two different layers. So it just depends. So at Ajipata Huko, and uh, of course, these days there are counselors, there are people who help, there are volunteers in those institutions. So they might end up in that institution where somebody will help them 
to deal with their personal issues and sort out the drug problem. But we don't have a place where we can send them to deal with the rehab. Maybe now the parent at a foot to the private institutions, ampeleke. But akienda kotini, anaeza tumwa kwa hizo za kurehabilitate. And then finally, abuse of children. The only thing we can do for our children is empower them. Because the abusers are everywhere. So if my child is aware, if a person tries to do this and this and this to me, I should raise alarm. I should report. You know? Because that's the only way. Let's make the children know what, what is wrong when someone is doing something to me or trying something on me. And if they try, I should be able to tell somebody. Because we will not be there. We don't know who the abuser is. They don't go around with a mark. But if the child is empowered, mtoto mwenyewe, That is, uh, for me, that's how, how I, <laughs> what I tell parents. Because the law will not be there. The law will always come after. So the ku empower mtoto, aweze ku, ku uh, the ch- empower the child to be able to, to know when somebody is about to do something, or when somebody is trying something, to be able to run if they can, uh, scream if they can, and tell somebody if, if, if it happens as early as possible so that uh, they sort out. And let's not beat our children when they tell us. We've had cases where when a child reports, they are beaten first before they are taken to the police to report. Please, uh, let's not do that. And then finally, because I know my sister will also speak on this, um, children who are born differently, the only thing the law has uh, in terms of the Children's Act is uh, that is a child in need of care and protection, the government has not given, a, a, doesn't have a, the institutions in place. Usually they are just institutions that volunteer. Voluntary institutions that take uh, those children in. I know like for cerebral palsy, there's an association, I have I've read about it. But in terms of government providing, I'm not, I'm not aware. But even for, for training, for training of parents on how to take the care of their children, it looks like we are left on our own in most places, in, in, in most, most times. I remember doing a small research on intersex children and coming across a gentleman at the Kenya Bureau of Statistics and he told me a very sad story. He told me that at one time they found there were 40 parents whose children were born blind deaf and I'll use dumb because I don't have another word. So your child can't speak, they can't see, and they're blind. And you're on your own. And here I was thinking that intersex children are the most, you know, like they have the biggest problems in this world. And he was telling me that uh, those children had not been captured in any census. Because I'm going to ask him whether intersex children are captured in the census and there is anything to capture children like that. He said no. And then he told me that story. And he said that he found that those 40 parents had come together and found people to train their children. Because they can't fit in a school for the blind. They can't fit in a school for the, sorry, for the, uh, what is this? There's another word, the politically correct one visually impaired, they can't, uh, for, the, for the hearing impaired, and they, they can't fit in any of those schools because who has been trained to teach all that at the same time? So they, they, he was telling me that time that those parents had gotten together, he found out, because they couldn't get help anywhere, f- uh, by themselves, come together, look for someone, people to train their children to live normal lives. So. My sister, you asked that question. I don't have an answer. Maybe she has. Thank you. I think you would make a program, probably once in a month, we talk about these issues. It's so wide. Now, I wanted to combine uh, just uh, an addition. The question is... He asked, and... uh, the abuse. If I was a young parent 
of this age, I could only suggest that when you have very young children, tender age, stop being mama or papa, be just a friend of your children. This child can tell you so much. Do you see this baby? Can tell you so much. Because you start by saying, don't let anybody remove you the inner cloth. You start by saying. And you will hear a lot of stories the child will start narrating. Mama, when we were outside playing, uh, Devi, Devi is the age mate, he was pulling my panty down. From there you build every day that if you allow somebody to remove your panty, this is what will happen, and when it will happen, this will be the consequences. Not only girls, even boys, you are aware our society is changing so much. We are not even talking about the defilement of girls. We are talking about the defilement of boys. So that is the only thing I will tell you. Stop being mama. Stop being dada, uh, baba. Be a, a friend of your child. These consequences is talking about children running away. That is early marriages. It started a long time ago, it, as is said, it is only that you didn't know. Now, people who divide. People who divide are those who are very close. Uh, they are relatives, they are parents, they are friends, they are neighbors who do that. A scenario I want just to mention, Karyoko SDA, you know it, in Nairobi. A young man who used to have a sub-school for the children. First he was in another station in Nairobi. Do you know he abused all the children he used to teach? And then he moved to Kaliako. He did the same, almost a half, and all the parents, they never noticed, they never realized, because of trust that he is teaching our children. It's only one child who he attempted, and the child went and reported immediately to the mother and the mother made an alarm. And when we were involved, we found half of the children he was training or teaching, he had finished with them. For those who like having relatives in their houses, please, if you have a brother in law in your house and you have children, Davadali, and it is very common, this issue is very common with a certain community in this Kenya, the Nyansa people. We bring all the relatives to our houses. I want to tell you, there is no relative who live in a house, if it's a man, and there are children, female children in that house who never misses to abuse them. Believe me, and do your study. Now, leave alone uh, relatives. Fathers in Kenya, it has become a routine. If you cannot abuse your children when they are young, men are marrying their daughters. When they have finished the university, either they are working or they, they are out of college. You will believe me or not, but that is a reality because 
you find mothers coming to report those issues in our offices that my girl completed the university na baba yake anaenda na yeye nimekuja munisaidie now atasaidika wapi <laughs> probably in, in your court and probably with the evidence of incest otherwise it's so sad that culture we used to have live alone christianity the culture we used to have irienda wapi fetha nari wanasema usiruhusu ndume ikiwa amesaliwa ndani ape dada zake ama mama zake nini mbegu iko hivyo iko hivyo mbona <laughs> mnanyamaza ikiwa iko hivyo kwa wanyama what, what is what is happening so eh wa mama i'm sorry wa baba si waone you know we are pushed to the world changes these are matching issues that we are not hiding anymore as a mother i'm telling my daughter if i'm not in stop entering at your dad's bedroom silently so what we are seeing si mnajisikia ngawa tuko kanisa eh shetani baba wa ulimwengu wengi wanamwabudu ikiwa wengi wanamwabudu do you see ile matunda yake when you fear god there are things you cannot do sleeping in bed with your daughter sleeping or defiling your baby Three months two months one month they are not innocent let us agree when they go to her desk she demand proper pre medical assessment and men have been found to be quite normal so these are the things we live with and uh, <laughs> i rescued a girl from the father she had defied the child when she was nine and i rescued her at 14. sasa police officers wanauliza maswali ile yote we unasikiaje ukifanya hivi akasema i'm sure hii ndio ichapata ugonjwa munisamee tu niliogopa ukimu busy that is a father talking that language so what we are doing we are encouraging children to be ambassador of other children that's why we established a forum we call children assembly in children department and children assembly in in, in education established those who are making children free other children who are rescuing other children those who cannot even say because kukona threat ukisema nitakukata kichwa the father is telling the daughter a relative is telling the, the, the child and you will never know such a child ikiwa alianza mapema si atatoroka si watoto wanatoroka hiyo ndio category tuko nayo kwa ofisi inasumbuka sana but uh, when they reach our age as we are standing here because <coughs> our times we grew in those rural we were almost all of us abused because ukiwa msichana unaitwa ofisi unaambiwa fagia kumbe the teacher is intending to do what to abuse you and you know we never had any forum to report to ukiwa kichwa ngumu ulikuwa unataandikwa viboko chungu mzima this is what we are talking <laughs> spare the lord spoil the child so what we are talking about please let your child be your friend and share always create time for your child the child will tell you everything which has been happening even drugs drugs are given to children when they are very small as sweets and when they are given sweets simekorokewa drugs you won't know 
But when you are a friend to your child, the child will tell you, Najua mami, nikipita hile duka ya fulani ya nanipanga sweets. Sini mzuri sana. You, your conversation has been created from there. The child will tell you, when I go to school, napata baba fulani, ananipa lift. Eh, your child anapewa lift. Start by saying, chochoto unapewa free. Ikona jambo itatokea. Ili, iyo usiano yako yendele from there. That's what we are trying to uh, create awareness to the community for everybody. Because the question which came from him on drugs. In Kenya, if a child is suffering from drug addict, there is nothing like a, re a rehabilitation in those charitable children institutions. Nobody's trained on it. You will arrange as a, a parent to private institution like Asumbi, you take and pay six months, but the one says their outcome, Gum san. Can we be friends to our children to eliminate drug abuse and abuses and other abuses? Uh, there is a question on special needs, children with special needs. Watoto with special needs like cerebral palsy, my friend, uki barikiwa na mtoto wa inaiyo, shukuru na mshugulikie. Ula jirani ya shuguliki, piga report kwa ofisi ya watoto. At least we will encourage the parents to appreciate kwa sababu hiyo kiumbe kuko na sababu alipewa. Na baada ya hiyo, tutamuambia Mtoto wa cerebral palsy anatakika na apelekwa for medical assessment aweze kufanyishwa masoesi mara kadhaa cause wengine baada ya masoesi wanapatanga kuamuka na wengine wanaongea na wengine wanaweza kujifanyia role zao kama kwenda choo na kuchipanguza na kuosha vitu so they only need medical assistance Mambo ingine ya shule, we have special schools, private. Tukona saa serekali, zira serekali hili, hili fungua. But zira saa dama and what? Dama, def, ziko. Unaweza peleka mtoto huko. Cerebral policy, tulikuwa na Dagoretti Children Center in Nairobi. Watoto wote walipelekwa ya that institution. Child of Children Institution in Aito Dagoret, Children Home for special uh, for children with special need. Waliwachiwa hawa toto. Na wakati waliwachiwa hawa toto, sisi wale tunaitua, unajua idara yetu inaitua, <laughs> ni ya watoto. Na watoto wote wa Kenya wanasemekana ni wa idara ya watoto. Ilibidi tukae na wale wa shirika, Tukawambia, now, can you get shambas for this one you have been left with? And because of that, they discontinued the program. It became outreach program, whereby families with children with special need, like cerebral palsy, autism, one of the while the children are at, at home. So even here, we don't have any of those charitable children in institution, or we can say in Kenya, we don't have. The, the few which are there, they are meant for those with low vision, those with uh, um, hearing impairment. They are very good schools that you can take ch children with you to be, even gi be given those devices to support them here. Thank you very much. Okay, now, in the interest of time, I know this is a topic we can never cover in one afternoon. There's so much on uh, this topic of children at risk, and even the various areas that we've already discussed. I know there's too much we may not be able to cover one afternoon, but I believe this is a program that will be ongoing, and so we'll have other opportunities to still um, re revisit these areas and even more. Now, um, let me just repeat one thing that uh, we saw a few things that I know we already know, 
but uh, I know it does, it, it does not hurt to remind one another. Just like uh, ju Judge has spoken and even Martha has spoken, I, I, I believe we get it that it's important that we empower our children, it's important that we educate them, we arm them, because if you fail to do so, if you fail to educate your children, if you fail to empower them, someone else will, and uh, you will be the one to regret. So it's important that we do that, it's important that we speak to them, it's important that we create time to speak to our children, however young. Let's spend some time every day to talk to your child. So let's spare time. Let me just emphasize that every single day to at least talk to your child so that you can, there's a lot you can get to learn from when you speak to your child, however young they are, as long as they're of speaking age. Now also, it does not mean that you cannot admonish our children, but you can do that in love. Uh, and um, there's, a, there's a very thin line between uh, disciplining your child and child cruelty because there's a point which if you cross and you're brought before the court for instance you're likely to be punished as, a, as the parents for being cruel to a child so i'm praying that this is a, a that god shall give us the grace to understand that there's that difference you can discipline your child with love and um, also it's important that we shield our, our, our children in every way from uh, the various uh, risks that they face every day and that includes social media, uh, as we are, talks, uh, we are informed in the morning. It, it, it also means that we also shield our children from various uh, in a, things that are, are inappropriate for their age. We also shield them also, of course, from our bad habits. We are not uh, perfect, even as parents. So we must really try and shield our children from our bad habits, even from our uh, own emotions, which the children are not of the age to handle. Let us try and re remember that. We may have, life is difficult and we may have different monuments, but let us try to remember that our children are not of the age where they can be able to handle some of the emotions that we are having uh, as grown-ups and even our differences. So let us try and shield our children. Above all, let us pray for them, let us love them, let us be patient with them, and let us uh, remember that we, hold, we, we are blessed with the children. We hold them in trust for God, and one day we shall account to God as to how, what we did with what he gave us. We shall account to God one day. So every time you think of being cruel, every think of doing something or some, it, that thought, uh, come, anything uh, negative comes to your mind, let us remember that we shall account to God one day for these precious gifts that he has given unto us. And let us read the Bible with them, let us, let us read the Bible with them and for them, uh, uh, with them all this, every day. Let us remember that there's a reason why children did not come with a manual. If every child came with a manual, it means a child will be born and at the time the child is being delivered, we will also be looking for the manual for the child. I can imagine a situation like that. So there's a reason God did not give us a manual for the child, but then there's a, the Bible, which at, at least to a large extent should give us a guidance on uh, various areas of taking care of our children. So in church, as we have said before, let us engage the children uh, and um, let us also note in our communities, in our houses, let us not shield uh, anyone who uh, ex uh, exposes children to these risks that we have discussed today and even more. So I believe we shall have other opportunities on, on other dates where we can even uh, um, expound on some of the areas which we did not cover today. Now, I would like to also ta just take this time to thank you, everyone that is here, for your patience, uh, for staying here until now at this moment. Thanks for your patience. I I'm hoping that you have learned something. Uh, you're coming from this place at least uh, with some information. So thanks a lot for your patience. Thanks a lot, um, Pastor, for giving us the opportunity. He's just walked out to, to uh, giving us the opportunity to handle this today. I would like to say uh, thank you very much for our guests today. It was not, a, I gave them a very short notice, but I am, I am, it's be, I, I don't find the words to express my, my, my gratitude to judge and even to our visitor, Martha. And I am hoping that you, are, you, you welcome them back to our church on an, another day, occasion, isn't it? So thank you very much. Thank you. I would, let me say that. Now, um, I would like to hand over the program. Um, I would like to, uh, Mr. Mbete just walked out. So, is it in? Okay. So maybe you can, uh, I can hand over the program to you. You can lead us in a word of prayer or if there's anything else you can do before that. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh,
Madam Eunice for that wonderful presentation and for everyone who has money to attend today. Maybe perhaps if Pastor has something to say, Pastor, maybe you can just say something and kindly, just like you opened with a word of prayer, close with a word of prayer. Just say something. Thank you, thank you very much for wonderful presentations. I know in some places you could have paid for this. Is it not so? You could have paid for this, but we are getting them free. May the good Lord continue blessing you for offering these services to us. As a church, we know we are more now enlightened and all more knowledgeable. May you continue receiving the blessings from heaven above. I don't have much rather than to request all of us to stand so that we may close with a word of prayer. Once again, dear God in heaven, King of kings, we are so glad to, be, to have been with us since we began the holy hours of Sabbath at the, sense, uh, at the setting of the sun. And also, Lord in heaven, we are seeing another day coming. We want to commit our lives unto the able hands that even as we engage ourselves into our daily activities as we begin a new week, Dear Lord, continue guiding us and help us, Lord, to be ambassadors of thy grace to those who are surrounding us. Above all, Lord in heaven, continue preparing each one of us day by day as we await for your second return. The message, the knowledge, the words of wisdom and encouragement that we have heard from thy servants, dear Lord, we pray that it may get a place in our hearts so that, Lord, we may work towards the well-being of our children. Thank you for being with us. Thank you because you have heard our prayers. Thank you because you have answered. For we pray all this believing and trusting in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. May the Lord dismiss us. Whispering hope, oh, oh, welcome thy voice, oh, oh, Paul asked again and again of the three separate Paul said, please go, please go, take away. Your work as a parent is to train, prepare your child for the future, prepare your child to stand on his own, prepare your child to be able to defend themselves, prepare your child. Water is going to destroy the world and then does not proceed to tell him to make something out of spawn. He makes a vehicle or a vessel that is going to be propelled through another Bible study. And then now they say, really? We were right all along about the time, but we were wrong about the world.